This hand comes from EPT Berlin in 2011. After nearly four days of play, the talkative Ben Wolanowski is in a commanding position as chip leader. Then, this infamous clash with Jupp van den Bijgaard plays out. So Jeffrey Hakim is going to open with a raise from the cutoff to 65,000 with Queen Jack suited. Wolanowski's got aces again? <clears throat> well, he's on the button. Call. No one believes button three bets, but he's going to slow play and just call. Andrewis has marked the small blind. Ace nine suited for Jupp van der Bijgaard in the big blind. Any chance he squeezes? With the suited ace and the odds he's getting in the pot, he's probably going to call, but it wouldn't be a bad spot with Ben just calling on the button. How much of this? Michael. Maybe alarm bells are ringing that Ben didn't three bet. Didn't know he had a call button. Maybe he just wants to see a flop. And what a flop. Ace nine deuce with two clubs. Top set for Wilanowski. Top two pair for Van den Bijgaard. And the flush draw for Jeffrey Hakim. He had the pre-flop betting lead. It's been checked to him. Disastrous flop for everybody but Wilanowski. A Hollywood poker writer couldn't have scripted this cooler any better. 93,000. Considering he has the board completely crushed, I like a flat call. It conceals the strength of his hand, and it allows for opponents to make mistakes. 193. He is going to raise. He sticks 100,000 on top. So what does you do with top two? Pristine opportunity to re-raise. He is out of position. He can't just flat call. He has to raise the price of admission. Show's about to get expensive. So he three bets to 530,000. He's stuck in about a third of his stack. Now, Hakeem can't call it all off with the flush draw. How much do you have behind? When Wolanowski gets a count, he may well think that Yuk van den Bijgaard has committed himself to this part. And for that reason, he may stick him all in to risk no clubs. Come on. He has shoved on van den Bijgaard. He looks disgusted. I'd, I'd be happy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Having committed a third of his chips, he's not meant to pass a hand this strong. He has top two on a board where it's very difficult for any hand to have him beat. I would already be eliminated from the tournament by now. I'm in the same boat. My chips would have gone across the line, the cards would have gone on their back, and I would have said an HGG. Such a big hand, but it can beat anything. How do you put Wilanowski on a set here? Yup is clearly thinking Ben does not have a bluff in his range. Does have aces. He put aces in his range. Maybe it's because Wilanowski just called pre-flop that makes him think he does have aces. The first time ever that I don't really know what to do and I don't have a good plan. I do that to people. <laughs> I guess. I hate myself. You will show if I fall? Talking all the time and now you're, you're saying, don't say anything. Interesting read. Oh. I'm just not going to answer that question. No, I know. Makes you feel better though. I don't hate you. I'm sorry? I don't hate you. You said you hated yourself. I kind of like you. <laughs> I don't like myself. You has picked up on the fact that Ben has gone quiet. He's the chattiest man in poker and suddenly he's gone as still as a statue. He's laid it down. That is an amazing fault. Van den Bijgaard should feel extremely proud. That is a spot where the majority of poker players would have gone broke. Well, does that fold amaze you? Vote now to have your say, then share it with your friends.